Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Defend Your Picks. We're here at the Tabernacle at Ascot Vale. I am Richard and with me is Nathan Damalatis. How are you going? I'm good, thank you very much. And today we're going to go through Nathan's picks in a draft we've just gone through. Um, So, Nathan, how did it go? Uh, It went pretty well. Uh, There was definitely some interesting picks, but I was pretty happy with the deck at the end. And uh, yeah, it ended up being very good. Oh, excellent, excellent. So this is an Ether Revolt draft. This is Ether Revolt, Ether Revolt, Kaladesh, and we'll get into the first pack. Sounds good. What have we got? We've got an Ether Chaser. Yeah. So one of the best commons in the set. Yeah. Um, just going through, it's going to be hard to find something at the common slot better than it. Oh, uh, that's hello. a lot better. <laughs> and then that's even oh, interesting. So it's off the top of the screen, but that's a walking ballista. If everyone, uh, if everyone's wondering, yep, there it is. Readjusting. Um, yeah. So this is interesting. Uh, that's Rich Scar Tusk is the best, one of the best uncommons in the set. Mm-hmm. May even be better than Walking Blister on power level, uh, but Walking Blister is a colorless card, and starting with a colorless card is a really good way to go. Yeah, you can't you can't go wrong with a colorless card that goes in every deck, which, yep. walking, which walking Blister is. Hundred so percent. I'm hundred percent on board with that pick. And I I don't love green as a color, so um, even if you've got a Ridge Scale Tusker, I like it a lot more with Ridge Scale Tusker. <laughs> I'll admit. <laughs> So you bring the modification to the front. Do you like it? I do like it. Uh, I don't like taking it this early. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see I've got Iron Tread Crusher there. It's a colorless card. It's really best in the white-red decks, but uh, it's not too hard to amass three power. And again, it's colorless. Uh, you can crew it with giant green creatures if you need to. So. All right, so you're just on the colorless plan at the moment. Yep. So you can go in any direction that you like. Yep, that's right. Sacrificing maybe a little bit of power, but that pack wasn't particularly yeah, powerful. Yeah, amazing out of it. We've got an Ether Thief, a Prey Upon, a Land if you want to fix something. <laughs> yeah, none of these cards are things I'm extremely excited about. Mm-hmm. Uh, two drops are important, but the O4 is not, hasn't really impressed me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Caught in the Brights is a solid removal spell, not as good as it would be in other sets because of vehicles. But like I said before, uh, the vehicle's really good in white, and so I'm happy to just take a white removal spell. And yeah, a, a removal spell at this stage is fine, and even if you don't play it, I mean, you, yeah. you're still you're still very, hey, <laughs> another one. Yeah, you're still very open, but I mean, the best thing direction. to follow There's up. A shock there too. There is a shock. Yeah, so you can see I pulled that to the front, and white red is a combination. I said is good with the crushers, uh, but once you've taken one white card, kind of makes sense to follow it up with another. Um, it's kind of fallen to the back of the pack there. If you can just see it, uh, the the uh, Dreadnought. Yeah. Uh, it's a card I've been kind of impressed with. Uh, so, again, in white red, it's not too hard to get two, three power guys. So, it's a card I have my eye on. If it comes back, I'll be I'll be happy, yeah. basically. So, we're a couple of white removal spells and a couple of colorless cards in. Yep. Do you have any inkling at the moment about what's coming towards you? What What is open? What do you think? Uh, at this point, it's, it's still a little hard to tell. I feel like white is open and red is a color that's on my radar mm-hmm. um this pack kind of complicates things a little bit uh you can see there's a maverick Doctress, which is a great blue red card yes um the bastion inventor which is a very good uh blue card in the inspire style decks uh and even the fen hall is a good black card i don't like these two white cards quite as much mm-hmm. um i actually think the fly is better than the the two two it's just too hard to set up. Yeah, I talked about that with Houch in our last video, that they, um, you have to jump through a lot of hoops to make it happen. Definitely. So this is a, a pretty hard pick. Um, I end up taking the blue the blue card, aware that I could end up in blue-red, in yep. which case it'll be a shame to have missed out on that. There's another Dreadnought for you. There, there is another Dreadnought, it. yeah, and I, I sort of have my eye on it. Um, there's, there's also a map. <laughs> there is a map. Uh, it's funny, in the Inspire decks, I actually like the Dreadnought better. Mm-hmm. Uh, inspire. I always call it Inspire. Uh, yeah. And I take it here. And the reason is because it helps you cast uh, big creatures early. And then those big creatures can crew the Dreadnought for you. Okay. Uh, so It kind of fits into the theme better than the map, which just turns into a land later. Which is, But ma- maybe the map is more versatile. It would fit into more decks? It definitely is. That This was definitely a, sort of me making a, a power level pick. Yeah, uh, okay. I feel like the map is... Not as powerful as the Dreadnought. The upside of the Dreadnought is way higher. And at this point, I'm sort of feeling like it's time to say, yep, okay, well, if I'm in blue, X, uh, in sp- whatever that mechanic is called. <laughs> Improvise. Improvise, thank you. <laughs> or I'm in a white aggressive deck, then um, I'd rather have the Dreadnought. Okay, yep. Uh, yeah. All right, so what have we got here? A bit off the top of the screen, we've got a uh, destructive tampering, is it? Yeah, I think... I don't really like any of these cards very much um, that you can see anyway. The uh, Black Flyer is pretty good, uh, and we just saw the 
um, Fen Hall will go by. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's very it's actually pretty hard to set up. Frequently, it's a four mana two two flyer. I think the red spell is just better. Yep. Um, so I just take it here. It's just two narrow effects combined to be a great card. And especially in uh, the deck which is trying to bash people in the face, the red-white yes, deck, exactly. is a very good way to finish the game off. Yeah, having access to a Falter that's not a dead card is uh, very exciting. Um, so, so how many do you think you would play? If you, if you have an, your choice of infinite destructive tamperings, how many are you going to play? I think two is the most. Okay. Uh, and that's pretty good, like pretty sweet spot. And more than that, though, and they lose their effectiveness pretty quickly. This is pretty great for you, an implement of combustion. We don't actually have the payoffs yet. So this is this is another awkward pick because we have a Fen Hauler again, which yes. is the best black improvised card. Uh, and then we have an enabler for a red improvised deck, which yes. I have no payoffs for. Uh, so this pick, I, you can see, I'm just Decent basically attack. deciding, do I think I'm going to get more red cards or more uh, black cards? Um, one thing I will say is there is an advantage to picking a Fen Hauler in that you can get cheap artifacts in Kaladesh, mm-hmm. but you can't get more improvised cards. Yes. Um, I think here, though, I still take the implement just because it is one of the best enablers for the, the red deck. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was a very close pick. All right. So you've, you've kind of set your flag mm-hmm. at this stage. Um, and then this one's sort of interesting as well, because there's no red cards. There's a black-white card, a medium-blue card, and a medium-white card. Mm-hmm. Um, and since I do have those removal spells, I just felt like I'd take the white card. Yep. Uh, one thing I do sort of like in artifact-based sets is you can fill out your deck with a lot of artifacts, which means if you only have a few colored cards that are very powerful, mm-hmm. you can fill in those blanks with, yeah. with artifacts. And it means you don't get punished quite as hard if you end up white with five really good white cards. Yeah, you can throw in a world fast monitor. If, even if you're not red, you can throw in um, a little green death touch yep. snake if you yep. like. They, they sometimes get the job done. Uh, There's not really a lot here. None of these cards are the things I'm excited to put in my deck. Spire I, of Industry? It's nice for a little bit of fixing, but it's funny that the decks that want fixing usually aren't the ones playing tons of artifacts. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so just a basically mediocre blue card. That is a late Aeronaut, but I'm pretty sure here I just take the Implement because I picked up uh, the three mana, the five mana three three improvised card, mm-hmm. and if I end up in like a white black little improvised theme, then having access to, and if that is, and if in the second pack you manage to get a, a lot of improvised payoffs, yeah, then I mean that card's going to be great. Exactly, yeah. So my colors are definitely not fixed here. Um, you can see I'm just sort of pulling out a bunch of artifacts to the very front of the pack. <laughs> There's no um, color. Where is the color? Yeah. Um, so the quad and the brights are the two biggest pulls yep. so far. Uh, nothing else really comes close in the color section. Uh, like the decommission's nice. The Bastion Inventor is nice. But you can really see I've kind of got artifacts and white cards. Yep. And that's definitely the mindset I sort of have at the moment. Um, so if you if you were to build your deck now, it would be red white. Yes. It However, would be. the red could just be thrown out the window. Yes. Hundred percent. Um, if I opened an incredible card of a different color here, I'd be very happy to take it. Um, the card I opened here, Scrap Scrap Troll is pretty good. Uh, an eagle. An eagle is good. Um, Some would argue the best white common. I think it's it's definitely up there. It might be better than the uh, removal spells. Um, this was a hard pick. I knew I was going to take one of the two white cards. Uh, Scrap Troll kind of have to set up a little bit, and the payoff's not incredible most of the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know which one of these slides is better, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> I end up taking the Aeronauts because it's just better in a board where there's nothing else in play. Just in a yeah. vacuum, a 4-3 is better I than think, a 3-3. I think I would be tempted to take the Eagle. I think I think the Eagle might be better. You don't have to jump through the hoop to get to life. Yep. And it makes your whole board yeah, monstrous. Was, uh, if someone told me you should definitely have taken the Eagle there, I wouldn't be I Wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah. Uh, so here's where things sort of deviate a bit. Um, oh, so I picked Ventral up Rebel. those late implements. Yes. Um, and Ventral Rebel is one of the few revolt cards I think is really worth going the extra mile for. Um, mm-hmm. If you play that and it's a 3-2 that kills a creature, you are miles ahead. Uh, and given I just picked up the flyer as well, that sort of uh, already makes me want to have some sort of access to revolt. You know, I wouldn't prioritize it for the 4-3. Mm-hmm. Uh, picking this up now, I feel like, okay... With those late Fen Halls and late Flyers, maybe I can move into black and okay. see a little bit of that in pack three. So 
So you're still, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there? Still a little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, I'm now pretty much locked into white with that flyer first pick. Yeah. But the black is now looking to be more likely to be my uh, third color. I am... A second color, rather. I'm regretting now that I didn't get pick up that fen hauler over the mm-hmm. uh, red implement, but... <laughs> Ooh, what <laughs> um, was that? Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, so Something there's a, very shiny there's in there. A, there's a pythene needle in this pack, uh, which is pretty cool. You can, like, needle their vehicles, and they can't crew them. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty good. It's good um, for improvise as well. Good for improvise. <laughs> nice, cheap artifact. Uh, but, you know, I figure... You know, I'm on camera. I've got to make the sacrifice and just take a solid two. We, we should mention as well that this was this whole draft was rare redraft. Ah, so this is yeah. why it's going around <laughs> the table. Otherwise, it would have been picked up. Yeah. right at the start, very the, first. The two draft is more likely to get me that Python needle than the Python needle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So just a two drop. Uh, it's very rare. You get the servo, but it's a nice little bonus when you do. Um, all right. So now you've got to try taking another vehicle or some random dorks by the look of it. Yeah. I generally prefer taking the vehicle over random mm-hmm. docks. Uh, the Crusher, it just has, has such a huge board impact when you get it going, uh, whereas a 3-mana three 3-2 three is something you can usually just never put in your deck and not be too sad about it. Yeah, so, very, very replaceable. Yeah, so second Crusher, I'm at this point, I don't really want any more vehicles. Uh, I've got the two Crushers and the uh, Dreadnought, which is basically impossible to crew. <laughs> uh, so I definitely want to stay away from that. Um, a the poison is just a great two drop. Um, goes really well with the mini improvised theme that I have. So you, that pick was interesting too because you gave up on the uh, the welder automaton. I did, yes. Which so, is another great two. So you've kind of gone down the, the black trail now. Yeah, and, and rewarded now, baby with a fen hauler. Fen hauler is exactly what the stack wants. All right. It's the payoff for the artifacts. I'm now at this point saying I am white black. All and right. It would take something incredible for me to get off it at this point. Someone's passing a free jam regent or something like that. Or... Maybe even better, to be <laughs> honest. It might have to be better than free jam regent. Um, so another two drop. There's a nice little pickup. Uh, the, the black implements a consideration as well. You see me pull it to the front. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to be careful because you don't have. A, you've only got maybe that one. You know, one or two payoff cards. So. Yeah. And the other thing as well is with those two vehicles, I'm really looking like a deck that wants to affect the board a lot. Yep. I really want to be attacking. I want to be Playing creatures that I can play on turn two, and then later in the game can use to crew my vehicles. Yeah. And the Implement of Malice is... It's going to be nice when it's cheating out of Fen Hauler, and it's going to be very bad all the other times. So, mm-hmm. two so mana, two, two. Another Countless Gears Renegade. It comes yes. with a friend most of the time. Or well, some of the time. <laughs> Occasionally. <it doesn't> <laughs> very countable Gears. <laughs> uh, so, this is just a nice little pickup. Uh, there's not a lot in this pack. There's a couple of red cards uh, near the back. I think I see, like, Gear Smash is not bad, but... Another implement goes well with the little mini revolt theme and the mini improvised theme and all my little themes all kind of want that card. So happy to pick that up. Uh, nothing really notable here. Just a nice sideboard card. We're getting towards the end of the pack. All right. So you're, you're, you're probably not going to get much else coming around here. You're pretty locked in in uh, white black now. Yep. Uh, what, what do you want to see in Kaladesh? Um, so there's some really good gold cards, the uh, the uncommon, uh, the 3-3 three, three that returns an artifact or creature in the graveyard to mm-hmm. hand. That's very good. Um, white, black sort of lost its theme a little bit from Kaladesh. It was sort of a tokens, artifact, chaos color. Uh, so while I have a lot of artifacts, I'd be happy to see the doomed operatives. Uh, my deck could use more removal spells after those two uh, Calling the rights. rights. I haven't really picked up anything else. So that's sort of what I'm hoping for. Um, I, I wouldn't be thrilled if I first picked a Doomed Operative, of course. But um, no, you take what you can get, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, but otherwise, the deck is not missing too much. It's a very late Spire Patrol. Uh, I'm actually not sad to see a Foundry Assembler, though. That's a card that's going to make my deck, because I picked up quite a lot of cheap artifacts. And yep. It helps. It's a small improvised payoff, while also helping fuel helping, the rest of it. Helping the yeah, Fenholders it's, it's get good, out as well. It's a good little bridge. Keep you keep you alive until you can get your big fen hauler online. Yeah. All right. So you just you're shuffling them all up, getting everything. You, you put them in order. Is that your uh, mana cost order? I usually do. I think this one ended up being a bit. I think I sort of did my head in with the trying to figure out where I wanted to put the improvised cards. So I think I gave yep. up kind of halfway through this. They're all just sort of at the front now. I assume I'll just not pay any mana for them, so that works out fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah. So just kind of shuffling up. I've got a you know, reasonable number of twos. I think twos are pretty important in this format. I want to get on the board and 
start attacking crew mm-hmm. vehicles. Uh, it's very easy to fall behind in this format. Not as much as Kaladesh, I think, but uh, still a fair bit. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I'm, I'm pretty happy with things. I've got a lot of artifacts, which I always like. It means I'm going to be able to cast my spells a lot of the time. I've got some enablers and some payoffs uh, in the two sort of themes that White Black overlaps in. And Yeah. All right. Here it comes. What... Do we get in Kaladesh? You're off screen. Oh, we can see the power and toughness. You can see it, so we know what it is. Yeah. Uh, one of the best cards in the set. Demon of Dark Schemes. So, that is. Uh, heavily rewarded for going into black. So you're not even looking at any of the other cards, I reckon? Nothing comes close. <laughs> 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 right. It would be Noxious Gearhawk Masterpiece, maybe? Gets, gets the nod. So, um, so, did you get to play? Did you get to play that card? I did, yes. Uh, it destroyed multiple opponents' boards. Uh, and it allowed me to reanimate cards for a lot of value. Right. And I didn't lose a game when I cast it. Okay. But so as you uh, everyone at home, take Demon of the Dark Schemes. If yep. you can possibly cast it, do it. 100%. <laughs> um, All right. So now we've got a... What have we got? A Mastodon and an, an Augmenter. Yep. Augmenter is just a solid role player. Uh, you get two servos, which you can use to improvise. Block, attack. Very good. Uh, this is less good. <laughs> so I already said I had too many vehicles and then there's just but you're no, addicted there's no other good black or white cards in this pack uh, Bromat Bazaar Barge is a small upgrade on the uh, 4 mana 6-6 six, six vehicle but I just don't think I'm going to play any other card so okay a disappointing a disappointing pick there did you did you did it make your deck? It did make the deck. I actually ended up cutting one of the crushes for it. Okay, just because you want the extra card, a bit more velocity. I, yeah, I think ha- like the loss of the one power and one toughness is worth it for the extra card. Yep, but I can see that. It's a very small upgrade. It is not. <laughs> it is not an exciting pick. Some people would say it was a downgrade. I yeah, love that power. There certainly would be times where I would rather have a six-six and an extra card, but most of the time I'll take the card. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. So. Now we're in a, a position where it looks like you're getting black flowing through to you from the first couple of picks. Yep. Um, is it is it just Dune Operatives? Is that you're looking for now? D- Dune Operatives is the that and the uh, five mana removal spell, the tidy conclusions mm-hmm. are probably the two big draws to the black commons. Um, here's not really anything I'm looking for. The the middle part of my curve is already pretty full. I already well, got a lot of by the sound fours of it. and fives. <laughs> Uh, so I'm not particularly interested in the servo makers or the uh, five drop. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just take a fragmentize. I like it a lot more than the decommission. It being one man is a huge boon. Um, the toolcraft exemplar there. Yeah. So this is a card I normally don't like very much. The fact that it's so bad on defense and sometimes it's sometimes just you a can one never man, turn it on uh, is really bad. Uh, the fact that I've got as many artifacts as I do, and in particular the fact that it does become a three power guy to crew all my vehicles that require three power guys yeah. uh, made me consider it for this deck. It, it ended up making the cut, uh, but I sided it out more than any other card. Anytime I felt like my opponent was being aggressive, uh, straight into the board. Okay. So how many how many of those one drop uh, artifacts end up making your deck? I think... So the two uh, implements and the dread model all made the cut. Mm-hmm. So all the ones that I could reasonably play. I didn't put the off-color ones in there. Oh, of <laughs> course, I wasn't quite ready for that. Built to last. Uh, Built to last is good. The one problem with it in this deck is with a lot of my high-end being vehicles and um, like the five fight, the demon mm-hmm. and the four three flyer. I didn't really feel like a combat trick was quite what I wanted. Okay. I felt like my creatures were gonna, my small creatures were gonna get their value by crewing vehicles as opposed to by smashing through blockers. So instead, I just took a pick that sort of solidifies couple of giant, that. couple of giant elephants. Yeah, uh, a, a reasonable five drop. You know, yeah. not exciting, but they're fine. They usually get the job done. I'll tell on your toolcraft exemplar. They will. Yes, that's. I hope that's not the first time it becomes a three two, <laughs> but they will get it done. Um, this was a little bit disheartening to see the sky wheel still there. Uh, it makes me obviously. I'm happy with where I ended up getting the demon, but seeing that the blue is still flying this late makes me wonder a little bit. Uh, the Puzzle Knot's a very good pickup, though. Yeah. Uh, creating two artifacts on turn two for my various improvised guys. Yeah, it's a very fast improvised accelerator. Iron Definitely. League Steed is a very good card, too, for yep. your kind of... I'm kind a little surprised to see that as late as I got it, to be honest. It's just a solid, uncommon. Yeah, you can just go play in all kinds in, of decks. Just play it in any deck if you need a 
formatted two two and a one one, it'll, it'll well, do it, the trick. It got to the deck whether it's the best in, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, very happy. It means everyone's it. drafting perfectly, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. We all know exactly what we're doing at all times. <laughs> Eat the flux reservoir at the back. Not 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 no. thinking about going combo. It might be a bit late. I got a lot of one drops, but probably <laughs> not that many. That's also probably too many elephants, um, but. It's a good sideboard card as well, if your opponent can kill little guys. Now, what do you think of the Torch Gauntlet? It, it is possible that it could make your deck, depending on how high your curve is. So, I like it a lot as a sideboard card. Mm -hmm. Basically, if my opponent is playing some sort of control deck with a lot of blockers... Just uh, to increase your power. So, since I've got so many servos, if I have a lot of time, I can just keep suiting them up, turning them into three ones, and just start crashing into blockers, and just using that to grind out real creatures... I wouldn't start it though, it's just it's too much mana. Yeah, no. And we're going through your, all your picks now. Yep, so this is the deck. Well, the the pool I guess. It's it's fine. We can we can see the deck in a uh, in a better form right here. So here's the final deck. Yep. Uh, you can see we've got the the uh, big big flyer at the top there and a few payoff cards, some good removal in the middle. I think it's I think it's quite good. How would you rate this deck? I would rate it probably around a 7 or 8. The fact that eight. there's... Well, 8 mostly because it has a Demon of Dark Schemes. Okay. <laughs> uh, it has you know a reasonable curve. Not, not great, but pretty good curve of a few good twos. You have enablers for the cards that you need to enable. You're rarely going to be paying 7 mana for a Fen Hall or in this deck. And then it has a plan for the short game of you know a couple of countless gears, renegades, and some improvised cards, and a plan for the late game in vehicles and demons. One thing I would have lacked is another removal spell or two. You know, black white normally you got a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Daring did, demolition, etc. It didn't really get many options to take that. But between the frontline rebel and the two court and the brats, uh, and being aggressive, that's a form of removal. Yeah, getting on the front foot. <laughs> yep, and just forcing trades. Uh, so I was pretty happy with it. Um, so in the in the matches we've played, we've we've played through all the matches now. Um, what what gave you any trouble? Was there anything that gave me trouble, or did you just run over everybody? No, I, I certainly ran into some issues. Uh, actually, the lack of removal came up in my last round. My opponent played three creatures that had four toughness, mm -hmm. and my early creatures couldn't punch through them. Uh, my vengeful rebel, even with revolt enabled, couldn't do the trick. My ballista couldn't pick them off. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what ended up happening was the board stalled out to a point that they'd cast a destructive tampering and just crushed me in one swing. Yeah, I think I think I know the deck you're talking about. A few Pima Outriders and some of those big red green boars. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and it it was very hard to get through that uh, in in one game. Uh, I also ran into a Yahini's expertise in one match, ah. which killed all my little creatures. Uh, I was lucky enough to have the demon to sort of steal back initiative after that. Uh, and close the game out but that was looking grim for a little while there uh, yeah. but otherwise yeah it's a pretty well-rounded duck and the final result where did you come uh i won the event so you won the event so, uh, so what did you first pick in the rare draft uh, uh, believe it or not i took that python needle. oh okay yeah, okay it, it got sure it got the night yeah. <laughs> all right well um thanks a lot for going through all your picks with us today this has been great and i think uh your deck was was very very good Thank well you very navigated much. um well done. And everyone at home, if you would like to be involved with Defend Your Picks, you can get in touch with us on Twitter at DraftaholicsMTG. You can find us on Facebook. You can go to our website, DraftaholicsAnonymous.com, and visit the feedback form and send us, uh, send us an email, and uh, we'll get you involved. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you next okay. time. Thank you very much.